for marbling, or Ebru, was added to the UN's World Cultural Heritage List in 2014, the first Turkish traditional art form to be recognized by the UNESCO. To find out more about it and how it's done, we're delighted to welcome Alpaslan Babolu here in the studio. Well, hello. Hello. Ebru, or marbling, has its roots deep in the Ottoman times, even the Seljuk times. Yes. Tell us about the art form. Well, uh, there is no evidence that uh, Ebru is performed during the Seljuk period. Oh. But the oldest Ebru paper we have, uh, which was made during the Ottoman period, mm -hmm. uh, is, is from, I think, 1536 or something like that. 1536. So the oldest paper is, is, uh, is this. A, a four-line talik calligraphy written by Maliki Deylemi. Uh, in Japan, uh, they have a, an art form similar to marbling. Uh, they make it on pure water. Oh. Uh, with, with relation to this uh, art, which is called Suminagashi, we can, the art historians say that the the history of marbling can be dated back to 900 or 1000 uh, after Christ. Wow. So it's even way, way before the Ottoman yes. Empire as yes. well. Well, um, traditionally in the Ottoman Empire, marbling has, is an art form that's passed from apprentice to mm. Uh, from Mas master to apprentice. Yes. How did you personally get acquainted with marbling? Well, uh, professionally, I'm an electronics engineer. Yes. In 1983, uh, I've seen an Ebru paper, first time in my life. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, my friend who introduced me to, to, to this uh, art uh, told me that there's an old man who lives in Uskida, and uh, he's the only performer of this art. And if he dies, this art will be lost. Mm -hmm. and I was not married then, uh, you know, I had time. So uh, I've decided to, to deal with this art, to, to prevent it from, from being lost. And uh, I've uh, read the recipes in the book of uh, Professor Ur Derman mm -hmm. and started to, to do it by myself. Yes. But it's impossible to do it by yourself. In 1985, I have uh, been invited by my master, that old man who lived in Uskida, uh, to his studio. And I started to work with him, in, and in 1989, uh, I got my, my certificate of uh, authorization or certificate of mastership. And in 1980, he died. In, in 1990, he died. And uh, I'm trying to follow his footsteps since uh, 1990 uh, to carry the tradition of uh, Turkish marbling to, to the new, young generations. That makes me think, do you have an apprentice yourself? Yes, I have uh, signed the certificate of authorizations of six of my students, yeah. Wonderful, that's yeah, very good to hear. Well, there are uh, various styles and um, themes in marbling. Yes. Tell us about some of them. Some of them are more calligraphy-like, some of them are more well, flowers. Well, uh, the basic pattern is, is called battalevru, it's called stone right. in English. And uh, this pattern uh, is normally used around calligraphies, mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in the frames of the calligraphies, mm -hmm. and in book binding. And from, from this battal pattern, we, we produce, uh, using needles or combs, uh, patterns called combed marbling or you know, uh, back and forth marbling. Uh, we make flowers for use in, in, book, in book binding. Uh, when you open the cover of the book, you see, say, one tulip here, one tulip here. Mm -hmm. You make two identical tulips on one page, and the bookbinder cuts the page into two pieces and places the, p the tulips in the, in, in the inside cover of the book. And uh, these uh, calligraphic marvelings uh, have been by the master of my master, Mustafa Düzgünman, by Nejmet Dinokyay, who is the master of mm -hmm. my master. And uh, he prepared the stencils first uh, by cutting them. Uh, and then placing them, uh, sticking them on the, on the surface of the paper using gum arabic. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, uh, you know, when gum arabic touches water, it releases the paper. Right. Uh, and he removed the stencils, he obtained calligraphic marvelings. 
right. or marblings uh, that contain calligraphies. Uh, and then he noticed that the, the places uh, where gum Arabic is, is put uh, do not accept pigments. So he started to write, because he was a calligrapher, mm -hmm. he started to, to write with, with gum Arabic directly, without, without ink. He used gum Arabic instead right. of ink. Uh, he, he has written uh, calligraphies on the paper and marbled the papers and all the calligraphies appeared themselves uh, within the, uh, between the uh, marble patterns. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us briefly about the marblings uh, trial with calligraphy, which is your latest exhibition well, it's on uh, right now? Because I love marbling very mm -hmm. much and I love calligraphy. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, I wanted to combine them and uh, watch the calligraphy and the marbling together at the same mm -hmm. time. You know, uh, you can see a good calligraphy, you can see a good marbling, but they are separated, they are not together. Uh, I wanted to combine them and uh, show people that uh, these are, uh, these give us the opportunity to, to uh, to observe, to see uh, both the calligraphy and the marbling. Right. This is the reason uh, I've uh, started m making calligraphic marblings in t 20 years ago. Alpha Sambabulu, we're delighted to have you in the studio. Thank you very much. Thank you.